Okay, so let's talk about the Canadians and the Rangers. This is a topic that I know I kind of have been avoiding it over the past few weeks, kind of sprinkling it in here and there in other video topics, but now that Bob McKenzie has actually spoken about this on a TSN Insider Trading article, I wanted to actually dive a little bit deeper into this and why it could be seen as something of value to those out there watching this video. Again, we're talking about the Canadians and the Rangers. We're talking about two players in particular. It's Max Domi and Capo Caco. Now, what exactly is the discussion that we are having today? Well, it is about type 1 diabetes and the way the NHL is going to try to return to play and the regulations as to whether or not players like Domi or Capo Caco are actually going to be allowed. Let's go over onto this TSN Insider Trading article published two days ago on July 7th. It talks about the return to play daily schedule. We've already kind of hinted at that a little bit, but not really gone too in depth with that kind of topic. You can find some stuff on Twitter regarding all those news updates. But what I wanted to focus on was the end part of this article, and it highlights just the topic that we're going over in this video. Does the NHL have a say in who can return. The writer here says, we know that NHL players can opt out of the league's return to play if they choose without consequence, but can the league also weigh in? This first thing is actually something that we haven't talked about before, but it is worth mentioning that yes, if an NHL player does in some capacity fear his own safety heading into the play-in series, he is allowed to say, okay, no, sorry, I don't want to participate, and he won't be fined or he won't be given any consequences, he will just be allowed to go home, I'm pretty sure. Because, hey, this is kind of a pretty important thing. If anyone out there is a little bit insecure about their own safety, their own family safety, and overall their well-being as a whole, and that's threatened by this whole play-in series and return to play format, then hey, it should be up to the players to decide whether or not they want to return or not return at their own discretion with no consequence from the league. So that's something that I really like. However, the question is on whether or not the league can also control these decisions. Bob McKenzie says this on that subject. The NHL has the ability to deem players unfit to play if they think they're higher risk and that they could get extremely ill if they were to contract the virus. The clause reads as follows. Players who are determined to be at substantial risk of developing a serious illness as a result of exposure to the novel beer bug shall be deemed to be unfit to play and shall not be permitted to participate in either phase three or four. Now, team doctors and infectious disease experts the NHL has hired would have to make the call on those players, but let's use Domi of the Canadians and Kako of the Rangers as an example. Both of those players are type 1 diabetics. Both of those players have a celiac disease. Now, I'm not suggesting that an NHL team doctor or an infectious disease expert doctor is going to say these guys are unfit to play, but they do have to go through that process. Now, I can tell you, Domi and Kako, to the best of my knowledge, want to play in the return to play, and they intend to do so. But there's that extra step because of their underlying conditions where doctors will have to sign off that they are fit to play or they're unfit to play, and all that process will take place at the beginning of next week when training camp starts and players go through their pre-phase 3 medicals. So that's a lot of text, but pretty much what Bob McKenzie is saying is that we don't know. The possibility is there, but we indeed do not know. Now for Capo Caco, it's actually kind of weird because earlier within the week, there was this article over here on, oh man, I'm going to butcher this, suomikeiko.com talking about how Capo Caco is not allowed to participate because of his health conditions. Now, this is a Finnish media outlet, meaning that this is not an NHL source, this is not TSN or Sportsnet or anybody in North America, this is just a full-on Finnish article talking about how it's apparently confirmed that he's not going to be able to play. 
I will say, though, that the proof and the guarantee isn't really there in this article because it just goes over the protocol. It just says that players who do have conditions will have to go through extra medical attention. It doesn't really say anywhere that it was confirmed. It just says in the title that he's not going to play. So this could be seen as clickbait. I'm not too sure. I just wanted to bring it up there because it was something that does exist and that I did see a lot of people giving attention to. So I felt it was only fair to bring it up. And because we brought that up, let's bring up the other side as well. There was a tweet posted on the NHL's Twitter account, or at least the NHL.com Twitter account. It's not Twitter at NHL, it's Twitter at NHL, D-O-T-C-O-M, NHL.com. Yeah, it's a really weird little thing they got over there. But they posted a tweet 19 days ago that they actually deleted. It said, Capo Caco is expected to play for the Rangers in the Stanley Cup qualifiers, even though the rookie forward is a type 1 diabetic and more prone to having serious complications if he were to contract the beer bug. So because they deleted the tweet, it kind of says to me that there's a little bit more uncertainty than we believed there would have been 19 days ago. But obviously, this is an ever-evolving situation. We don't know if it's actually going to happen or if these players are going to suit up. But for guys like Domi and guys like Kako, it certainly could provide some different impacts for their team. You can say what you want about both of these guys potentially being third liners, but the fact is, Max Domi for the Montreal Canadiens could be probably the best third line player on that squad. If you have Philippe Deneau and Nick Suzuki as your 1-2 center punch, and you have Domi down there on the third line, then you really have yourselves what is one of the most important players in your lineup on that third line. It's no disrespect to Max Domi, it's just where he's happened to slot into the lineup, and it's certainly something that a lot of Habs fans can agree with and say, yeah, you know, that indeed is just how we do it. We all kind of know what Domi is about. He brings a lot of energy, he brings that feistiness, that attitude, and that drive to the rest of his team. However, he's been injured quite a lot throughout this past season, and as a result, his production has plummeted from what was a 70-point campaign a year ago after getting traded over to the Habs from the Arizona Coyotes. There's a big potential of growth here for Max Domi if he can exhibit himself as a player that we know he can be stepping up in a playoff environment, putting up points, rattling the opponent, and getting under the Pittsburgh Penguins' skin. To me, that kind of player is more valuable than what a Capo Caco is right now to the New York Rangers, because let's face it, Capo Caco, 20 points, 70-something games, wasn't all too great compared to the expectations that people had for him. He just didn't really have that same edge. For some reason, people saw that he was faster, more dynamic, and a lot more deadly in Finland. It's just that sometimes over here with the New York Rangers, that deadliness and that overall danger within his game, it wasn't there to the same capacity. So, if this little break is going to give Capo Caco the mental rehabilitation to allow himself to return to the Finnish Liga Capo of one year ago, then this could be a very big wake-up call for the Carolina Hurricanes. And even though type 1 diabetes and celiac disease immune system deficiencies do lie in the face of adversity in the situation, these two players are certainly players who have a boatload of potential of upward growth in this kind of situation. For the Montreal Canadiens, you know what, honestly, I could see some Habs fans going out there and saying, you know what, it's fine with me if Domi doesn't play, you can keep your safety. Do all you can to make sure you don't contract the virus, because if you're out of the lineup, the fact is the Habs get worse, and the Habs getting worse means they have a higher likelihood of getting Lafreniere. So I could totally see that twisted point of view that could definitely just be probably plotted into my comment section in sheer volume at the moment. But, on the other hand, for the New York Rangers, they're a team that if Capo Caco was able to come on and use the time off that he's had to his advantage and get back to form to what he was a year ago, this could be huge. And even if he doesn't play, it's not like Capo Caco was that incredible influencer on the Rangers this past season that he was a year ago with the TPS Turku. So to me, it's not the biggest loss in the world. And at the same time, the Rangers weren't even supposed to be here anyway. They're supposed to be in a rebuild for crying out loud. Guys like Igor Shashurkin coming onto the team and Adam Fox and Tony D'Angelo lighting things up and Capo Caco adding himself to that squad. It's certainly a nice dynamic here. But 
it will remain to be seen whether or not this narrative with the Rangers and the Domi narrative with the Habs will actually come to fruition. So talk to me in the comments below what you think about the Capo Caco Domi situation. Do you think they're going to play and do you think they should play in the 2020 play in series? I hope you enjoyed this video social that trolls 99 and bye. <laughs>